This past Sunday, the Seattle Times released an investigation months in the making that shocked some, but apparently was no surprise to others. The Times reported that acclaimed Seattle chef Eduardo Jordan had been accused of sexual misconduct or unwanted touching by 15 women. Jordan, who is a James Beard Award winner, has been on New Day several times. Uh, and you may know him for his popular restaurants, Solare and June Baby. Well, I spoke with the two writers of this story, Jackie Variano and Asia Fields, about what led up to the story being released. How did this story start? Well, it started with Source from a different story I was working on, who was a former employee who asked to get together for coffee. And it um, that was in January of 2020. That was the first kind of inkling that we got, and it just kind of went slowly from there, from that point, person by person. I joined um, kind of late in the process. Jackie had already been, you know, talking to people and reaching out to, um, you know, their recommended contacts. And um, by the time I joined, she had already talked to a lot of people. And I think something that struck out to me, stuck out to me is just that everyone we talked to kind of said, this is an open secret in the industry. This is something they wanted to kind of come forward about for a long time, but had felt um, afraid to do that. You know, I think that is the hardest part, I would imagine, in, in working on a story like this. But what kind of process did you take when it came to the research and, and vetting these stories? Because I, I mean, in reading these articles, you can tell, I mean, you've got the dates, you've got everything locked in. How long did that process take when you're talking about something that can't quite be investigated easily? This isn't, you know, a city record thing. Well, that's where we started too, was with city records for sure. And then it was really uh, about going back to those people, uh, building that level of trust with them that made them want to continue talking with us um, and finding more people, uh, finding people that could corroborate stories, doing our own background work to check dates and see if uh, there was any physical evidence that we could uncover. Um, and it really was just a lot of time and, and getting those people to trust us to continue revisiting their trauma. We've seen this happen now at several different establishments and it's something that seems quite pervasive. Is that making it easier for people to talk about this, that we are getting it out in the open, that, that these stories are being shared? I think something with this story was just the strength in numbers. Um, people felt a lot more comfortable coming forward than they had heard that we'd already talked to dozens of people. And I think it's also the case, there, there was a recent story by the New York Times about um, the willows on the island. I think that and stories like that that had come before ours really helped um, encourage people to feel like they could come forward and, and share their experiences. Yeah, I know one of our colleagues, Sydney Brownstone, she did that story on uh, the Five Points owner. And these are things that I think a lot of people are having a hard time with, with reconciling uh, places we're used to identifying going to. But what do you ultimately hope people who read this learn, especially when it comes to telling other stories similar to this in the future? I don't think anyone is alone. So that safety and numbers did help our story, people knowing that they weren't the only one who had experienced this and just knowing that if you find the right person that will treat your story with the same care and dedication, that it can be told. This unfortunately isn't an uncommon allegation to hear of in the restaurant industry. Um, there is a lot more work to do. Um, and that's something that we're hoping to continue to investigate the treatment of workers in the Seattle area um, at restaurants. Do you think that the city is doing enough to protect these service workers? And is there more to be you know, looked at in that aspect? I'd love to hear what Jackie thinks about this, but I think it's difficult because the restaurant world is so close knit and kind of mm -hmm. insular. And when people have concerns, who do they go to? They typically aren't going to make a report, an official report about their boss. They depend on their job for their livelihood, and they have concerns that if they speak out, they'll be retaliated against when they seek jobs in the future. So I think the biggest hurdle here is just that workers don't feel like they have 
um, a place to go to when they have concerns. I agree with that. And it would take a large scale concerted effort to create some true neutral organization that people could feel safe bringing those issues to that would be on their side. As I mentioned before, it was disappointing to, to read that headline. I think because we see these public figures like Eduardo, the public wants to think the best of them and they do have a cache of power with their success. Is that why so many people were reluctant to come forward? I think that's a big part of why, especially if you continue to work there or rely on that person for a paycheck and don't feel like you have any other options to move on. It's a big accusation to make and it's tough to put yourself out there, I think, in making those accusations. You also made a good point earlier about the restaurant industry being a tight-knit community. Was that a fear that you heard people echo as well? That was a fear that we heard from sources, um, especially because Eduardo Jordan is a beloved chef in the community. He has really great connections both here and in big restaurants around the country. A lot of people mentioned kind of his status and reputation as, as reasons why they were afraid to come forward just because speaking out against him could impact their career. Thanks again to Asia and Jackie for talking with us and for their hard work on this story. We've got the link to the full story on New Day's website.